Hey guys, today I'm gonna talk about the largest magic YouTuber, or I guess the largest YouTuber who has shown interest in magic, not named PewDiePie. And that is not the person here. I always like to include a funny picture of Unsleeve Media when he gets involved in these discussions because he has some pretty funny pictures. Anyway, um, let me focus on Boogie. Um, Boogie has become... He was very famous for his videos of Fat Man does this, Fat Man does that. And of course, who could forget his Magic Gathering video where he flips the table on his opponent in jest, which I assume is a joke. Uh, he also has a Magic video of him cutting the FNM promos, and he does like Magic. He loves Magic. So I would say Boogie is truly a Magic player, which is one of my biggest pet peeves against some of the quote content creators in this space where I don't even think they own a single magic card to be honest. So back to Boogie, this follows a very similar plan that a lot of YouTubers have. One YouTuber in particular, uh, Junior Cheeseburger Wedge, where you act sad and pitiful and pathetic and then you act oh I need donations I'm going to blank myself unless I get donations I'm quitting magic how many times does Wedge say that he's going to quit magic or quit YouTubing or even Tolarian right Tolarian has made that statement as well I'm going to quit magic I'm going to quit YouTube Unless you donate me money, otherwise I cannot continue. So you're holding your subscriber base hostage. And I do have screenshots of Tolarian and Wedge doing this at least one time. Wedge has done it a few dozen times. That's what Boogie has been doing. He has a video and I encourage you to do your own investigation and figure this out for yourself. Um, Boogie is a very big YouTuber in this space. And he gets lots of views. Um, his magic videos get lots and lots of views. He actually has a, another channel for just his magic and his other games. Very similar to Pro Jared, who is no longer making videos. And was a huge magic fan as well. So when you deal with people who are, quote, nice people on the internet, they're not nice people in real life. That's what you have to understand, that nice people online are not nice in real life. Why are they trying to be nice to you? Is it because they want a donation? Is it because they are, maybe they're a predator? I mean, how many nice people you meet online in a chat room and then, hey, send me a nude? It's like, well, where did that come from? No, that's the whole point. They're trying to be nice because they're, they're, they want something from you. And psychology has shown that when you have facts and you're real, you don't need a story. You don't need to play this, um, how should I say, you don't need to play prophetic or pity. That's just who you are. But when you want to sell something, uh, like a salesperson, and maybe the item that you're selling is a donation, which is one of the hardest items to sell because... If you think about it, even the uh, person who comes to your door unsolicited and tries to sell you windows, yes, the windows are overpriced. Yes, it's not going to be a good deal. Otherwise, why would he be knocking on your door? And yes, he's going to get a commission and maybe he's commission based only. So he's very motivated to talk and make up some fake stuff about his windows. But at least then you get a window. So in terms of magic donations, what do you get? You don't get anything. You just get, you know, oh, thank you for your donation. Thank you. Um, I'm a big fan of supporting people. I don't support them by giving them donations. I support them by artwork. I've commissioned a new Fire Emblem playmat. I've commissioned some more Fire off Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem Free Houses came out, and I put out over $2,000 of commissions in playmats, cards, and artwork, graphic design, I mean, all of the MTG line stuff, that was paid for, right? Um, I'm hiring a cosplayer to dress up as Elsa to do some funny Elsa cosplay because uh, the Frozen movie is going to come out soon, I think, Frozen 2. If you want to help someone who's a cosplayer, you hire them 
to do work as a cosplayer. That promotes their brand. That shows that, hey, they actually have a client, right? Um, so we hire face painters, train operators. I'm not going to get into that right now. And the cosplayers for events. Uh, we have a lot of um, clients who do school events. So having Elsa show up at a school event or school festival or a meet the teacher festival is great. We pay for that. I pay for that. Now I do get pictures of the kids and Elsa and and that's what I'm paying for. I'm paying for, but that's on point. So as a cosplayer, would you rather have free money or work and build up your brand? Because now that school knows you and they know about me too, which is great. So it's on brand. Um, so we have a cosplayer coming tomorrow, but by that time it's already going to be, I make these videos a week ahead. Elsa, Anna, and uh, another costume. Just work at play at work office, right? So that's kind of the cosplay thing. And obviously we give our, co if we give our artists, we give our um, altruists, whoever, we give them the opportunity to post the work that they did or we did for them. They like photography, for instance, if we took the photos, we'll give it to them and they can use it to show other people. We just need it to use it for commercial use on clients and ourselves. So when you talk about Boogie, uh, there's a, a very upsetting video. And I watched the video and I had to turn against him after I watched the video where he wants to buy a $100,000 Tesla and he's asking for donations. That sounds very similar to a dude who ha injured himself in Las Vegas. Again, the most expensive place to injure. If he had not traveled to Las Vegas and he had injured himself in where he is in the middle of nowhere, New York, he would not pay nearly as much, right? You know how expensive Las Vegas, I mean, have, if you've ever been to Las Vegas, it is a city of very expensive things. So instead, if you were to buy a toothbrush, you could buy a toothbrush in New York for, I guess, $2. In Las Vegas, it might cost you $10, $12, right? Um, casinos everywhere. The food is expensive. Everything. So what would be probably be the most expensive thing in Las Vegas? Emergency room. <laughs> Think about it for a moment. He, he literally traveled to the most expensive place to get injured how many more expensive i mean las vegas people do crazy stuff right so i'm sure that emergency rooms are filled to capacity with people doing dumb stuff all the time because hey you know leave it in las vegas right i would also suggest that it's very similar that if you have a big following and you ask for donations and then you get more donations I remember Tolarian Community College, Brian's basement flooded one day, and then someone donated $10,000 to him. Or was it five or ten? But he was collecting donations for his flooded basement. And I'm just like, dude, all of Houston is flooded. Are you blanking kidding me? Like, oh, you're, you're sorry, your basement flooded. That's, that's fantastic. I have friends who lost their entire homes, right? With no insurance. Hurricane Harvey. And... When Louisiana happened, one of my really good friends, uh, Hurricane Katrina, we went down our first year of law school to help rebuild and build up not the best neighborhoods, I would put it that way. Has Tolarian Community College ever done that for anyone else? And that's, that's my biggest pet peeve on this issue is Boogie doesn't donate to other people who need money, right? That would defeat the purpose of what he's trying to do. Tolarian, when is the last time he made a donation in either, you know, money or supplies? I'm sure that he has a lot of supplies. Th same with Wedge. They're so self-centered that they don't understand. And eventually, it will catch up with these people. Uh, it caught up with Boogie. It took him, what, 10, 15, 20 years before his audience finally, like some of his audience is like, oh, whoa, what's going on? Should we really donate for your $100,000 Tesla? And then he went from buying a Tesla to putting a deposit down and then not buying it, but then being afraid to lose his deposit and so on. And, you know, it gets to your head. When you're a nice guy online, 
I think a lot of people don't live in reality, right? Like in reality, the nicest people like Alex Bacini, Sebastian's probably really nice. Alex Bacini, the one thing that people say about him is he, he's the nicest guy ever. And I'm sure that's true because everyone says it. But he'll cheat and he'll steal and he'll lie to the extremes when he's posting on Facebook a um, apology letter and then he gets banned two weeks later. I mean, I'm it's stranger than like, why would you even post an apology letter if you just continue to cheat? Like, would it not make sense not to post it? And then at least when you're banned for life, like it doesn't, you don't have to delete it and you didn't spend the awful amount of time to figure out the logistics of posting it. Uh, I'm, it's sad to see pro Jared. So in terms of magic gathering YouTubers or people promoting the product, pro Jared is gone. You know, he had a million plus subs. Boogie is basically gone. He's not going to be a good product sponsor, in my opinion, again. Um, I don't really trust what he says anymore because you know that there's donation. Don't, I mean, when you ask someone, when you ask your subscriber base, maybe many of them younger, and you make these claims that if you don't get the money, you know, bad things are going to happen. And it is very manipulative. And I see this in the community all the time where it's bad. It's, it's bad. Because um, when you rely on money, it's, I'm now going to go a little p bit political. So uh, please. Uh, end the video now if you are screamish about that. Schemish. Screamish? Screamish, yes. I think in terms of a welfare state, you can't continue to give people more and more money to be in a welfare state. Like, what's his name? The Chinese guy running for politician. Like, everyone online loves him because he has universal $1,000 a month. That would be, you know, the definition of a welfare state. Because the next time, when so if Andrew, oh, Andrew Yang won then you would have a second person and they would say, you know what, I'm going to give you $2,000 a month. And then Andrew Yang would either have to say 3000 or can you know, or lose. And then the next guy would say 5000 So in a welfare state, you know, Boogie didn't begin by asking for a $100,000 Tesla, right? He asked for a few donations here and there. He's making a good living. Um, let me tell you where he is now. He, he dated a cam person who was much younger and was actually at the time they were dating under the age of 21 and Boogie's an old dude. That's his lifestyle, right? That's what he wants to be. He wants to date people who are much younger than him who are in the potential porn industry. Like I'm, I'll put it flat out for you guys. Should little kids be donating money to an individual who wants a hundred thousand dollar Tesla car and it's, dating and in relationships with people who are much younger and in the porn industry. I don't know. Nothing against the porn industry. It's great. But at a certain age, I assume that like you're not going to want to do that, right? Like, I mean, you're supposed to be wholesome, a nice guy, a very kind. <laughs> you're not. You're just not. Bye, guys.